Hi, and uh, welcome to my little video here. I am going to go in detail all of the fun I had trying to get the Crash Plan plugin working in a FreeNAS jail uh, and configuring it using a graphical uh, interface on another system. Uh, there was a lot of different things online about this. I had to hodgepodge all of it together and I just wanted to go over and hopefully help somebody uh, avoid the headaches that I had. This is going to be a two-part video just due to the limitations of some of my software but let's go ahead and dive into this. First of all I have my little uh, script here. I just want to go over this real quick. The first thing we're going to do is if you're running your free NAS installation in a virtual machine like I am and this is my home environment so some of this is not the most secure settings and it's not the most ideal situation but it's working great for me it works really well personally <clears throat> so let's go ahead and open up our virtual machine here or this is a virtual machine but our host and then we're going to bring up our uh, Oracle virtual box which is what I'm running but any kind of virtual environment you're running you want to enable promiscuous mode in your networking that was the first thing that I found out which was a great thing to learn so here I'm going to go to settings down to network and then allow all in promiscuous mode by default it is deny so we're just going to click on allow all hit ok and then I like to reboot the free NAS after that's done just to make sure everything is kosher and running the way it's supposed to the next step is to install the plugin I'm assuming that you already have done that if you have I recommend going back and uninstalling and then reinstalling after the crash plan plugin is installed what you want to do is go over to plugins on the left hand column here in FreeNAS. I was not aware of this. I was just turning it on and letting it do its thing. But you're supposed to go in here, click on it, and then you're going to get an end user license agreement for Java. I have already accepted mine. That's why you're not seeing it. But definitely something to do. And then restart it. After that is finished, let's go to the next, see, the next step is we're going to go into, I'm going to move this off to the side. I'm going to have the information in, down in the description for you. Don't freak out. So we're going to go over to our jail. This is the next step. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Crash plan. And we're going to go into, um, well, first of all, let's go into edit jail. This is going to give us the IP address information now of course we can already see the IP address right there you can see that it's 90 on my network uh, but you can change that if there's going to be a conflict I do recommend doing that you also want to make sure that NAT is not selected and V image is and auto start as well hit save on that now we can go into the shell now there I I like to use putty for this and to SSH into it however we're going to keep things really as simple as possible and hopefully using the built-in shell will help with that. What we want to do is we want to edit a file. I'm going to copy and paste it over here. And again, that's going to be down in the description. I like to use this EE command. I assume it means easy edit or something like that. I am not a Linux guy or FreeBSD guy. I do not know. But it works really well for my needs. So we're going to put this in here. We're going to edit this uh, my service XML file. All right, hit enter. And we're going to scroll down to where we have our local loopback address. Now on here you can see it's already edited. This is my live environment. So under service UI config, you can see that here. We go down to service host and this is where it's going to say 127.0.0.1. I changed it to 0 so that it would listen on all IP addresses for on port 4243 again not the most secure but it does get the job done so when we're done we hit escape and we hit A for leave edit or enter and then save changes sure I'm not going to save it because I already have my settings in there but you do want to save that when that is done we're going to go ahead and reboot that and to do that, you're going to uh, copy and paste in, let's see here, copy and paste the following. Okay, you got service crash plan stop and and, you got to be super and on that one, 
service crash plan start. And that's going to stop and start the service. After that is finished, your next step is going to do sock stat, no, not doc, sock stat. And we should see a bunch of Java. And all that's going to be telling us that Java is running, we got our connection going, everything is looking good. If you don't have a bunch of Java's running, that means something is wrong, and we're going to have to do some serious work on it. But for right now, that works out really well. The next step is we want to connect into this. Now that it's listening on every port, actually we can just do socks.l just for the listening, and it should say 4243, like right here, any IP address on 4243. Now we're going to go into the machine, now on mine it's a virtual machine, that's hosting the crash plan software. And here you can see it is backup is paused and you know, all the files and everything that I want to back up. I'm kind of doing this incrementally. My internet connection is kind of sucky. So the first thing we're going to do after we have crash plan installed, we want to make sure that it is ended. It's not running. We're going to close that out. It's done. And then we'll minimize that. And then we want to go into C program well, on this machine it's C program files crash plan slash conf and you just want to go to the installation folder of crash plan and go into the configuration folder which is CONF go down to UI properties we want to edit that um, you can also do open with and then notepad is what you want to do so like open with and notepad we want to go over to where it says service host equals and it, by default it's going to have a hash here so we'll do hash and then 127.0.0.1 obviously I have unhashed it and put in the IP address of my jail you want to go ahead and save that after it's saved you can go ahead and launch crash plan and what that's going to do is it's going to connect up to the jail that we set up on free free NAS and this is where problems start on my system and on yours, what's probably going to end up happening, what mine did, is it asked for a username and password, I gave it to it, and then it upgraded my jail. When it upgraded my jail, it upgraded Java, and Java began to crash. On the next video, we're going to go over that, so stay tuned.